Okay, in 1989, Jacob Wetterling was kidnapped, and he was with his friend and his brother, and the gunman came out of the driveway and told his friend and his little brother to run into the woods and not look back, otherwise they'd be shot. And yeah, that was the crime that happened in the late 80s. So here is crime in Minnesota. It went from 6,000 to about 9,000 in 10 years. And that's, that's a pretty big change. Here it is in 2000 to 2010. And you may think that it hasn't changed a lot, but it went from, if you look at the left side, it went from 6,000 to 1,500 about. And you may wonder why this is, gets, goes up and then goes down. But there are many factors that comes into this. One is population. And there's some population rates from the 70s to the 80s. And it went from 3.8 million to about 4 million. And then it went from up to 5 million. So one reason that why crime has changed is poverty. So poverty is when, or like homeless, or people on the streets. So here's poverty rates from 2000 to 2011. And in 2005, we'll go from 2005, it, the percent was 9% of the population. So if we do 9% of 5 million, then that will equal 461,406. 4, 461, and that's how many people who are in poverty. And they might want to steal your things because they don't have it. So that's one effect. That's one factor. Another factor would be alcohol. So alcohol can affect the body by controls your, your movement, your memory, and it controls your movement, your memory, and it can control how you act in general. So someone on the influence of alcohol might, might rob you or act a lot different even when they weren't on the influence. So another reason, or what we can do to solve this is we can open up new jobs so people who are in poverty can make money and get an apartment or something. <laughs> and we can also we can also improve the amount of police controlling the areas so and response time and other things to stop crimes in areas like New York and Chicago. So I hope you can gain something from this talk and thanks.